All right, everyone, it is a Warhammer the Old World battle report. We've got my dwarf in mountain hold, hold, holds against some orcs and goblin tribes. It's a 2,000 point battle report. All right, so it's 2,000 points. Uh, we're running a kill scenario with an objective where we have it like a, in the center worth an extra 250 points just to spice it up a little bit. And I'm bringing out some of my newly painted dwarfs. I've been uh, working on them for a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get into the army lists. Uh, so I don't have his, but I'll go through mine. So uh, right now I'm running basically a king. Um, I've got him with the shield bearers like you do and a rune of preservation. So, uh, and I've got a rune of stone to river an extra armor save. And I basically just have him with a great weapon. So nothing special with the king. He's just tough. He's got that rune of preservation. So you're gonna have to get through six of those wounds. He's got the rune of stone and he just has a regular great weapon. I then have a Thane. Thane has a great weapon and he's got the master rune of Grundy. That's the five weapon vulnerable. Uh, for the squad, um, and he's got the Master Rune of Grommel and a um, Rune of Stone as well. So again, just a little bit of survivability with the Thane. I've got a Rune Lord. Rune Lord has full plate. I've got him with a shield, but I'm also running a great weapon as well. Um, so, And I got that with the Thane as well. I can switch in between them. Got the Rune of Balance, the Rune of Stone for an extra reroll, and I've got the Rune of Spell Raking, which is just an extra um, Dispel Scroll, basically. That's better. Uh, so for my core, uh, just got 500 for the core. I've got a unit of six Thunderers, seven Thunderers, and then I've got 17 Longbeards. I'm actually running these guys with just um, just with the shields. So um, choosing instead to go for the four up armor save. Uh, the Thunderers also don't have anything else. They're just armed with their with their rifles. So trying to keep it um, a little basic. Then I have a 15 man warrior squad. I have these guys with great weapons. Um, yeah, and they're just running that. I don't have these guys with shields. So trying to uh, make these guys a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of chaff, but also can do some hitting on the other end. For specials, 16 man iron breakers um, that I've got the cinder bombs. Um, he's got just the standard bear. For the hammers, I've got 18 man hammers. I've got the royal champion who's got the ruin of passage to give them uh, move through cover and I've got the standard bearer who's got the rune of confusion so that's sort of a, just a standard thing you do with hammers that rune of confusion is great especially with their um, their stoic defenders so pretty nasty and of course my leader is going to be running in there to get the royal guard I've got a gyrocopter that's just running the steam gun um, gyrocopters are super good and then for my rares I've got two five man units of iron drakes both with the wiring warden and troll hammer torpedo yeah, I've, so I've been looking around with a lot with dwarves about some sort of way to counter monsters. And I think I just have sort of settled on Iron Drakes. I think that especially with the ballistic skill 4 and 5 for the leader, that's a that's a pretty good thing going on, especially with that troll hammer torpedo. All right, so let's just looking for dwarves. You can see I've got um, my hammers and that, my standard bear and my leader in there. I'll actually, um, part of this... I'll move my um, Rune Lord in there as well. My two units of Drakes, and I've got my my hand gunners behind them. So I've got the Great Weapon um, Warriors here. Then I've got the unit of Iron Breakers uh, right here. And then above them, I've got the um, uh, Longbeards, and finally my Gyrocopter. So yeah, let's go and let's look at the setup. So after everything on the setup, um, you can see here, I basically ended up, we went back and forth, but I ended up putting my uh, my Dwarven Warriors here, and then I've got my Hammers here. Actually, uh, I got my Standard Bear and my Leader in this unit. I actually go ahead, and as we're setting up, I put my Rune Lord in this Hammers as well, because as we're placing characters, I see he places his one of his big mages on his goblins over there. Towards the center, I've basically got, uh, so yeah, that's just, a, so for him, he's got a goblin mage leader on his spider, so that's why I ended up putting my rune lord here. He's got a unit of black orcs here, they're uh, running with extra hand weapons. He's got a unit of just boys uh, right here that are running, uh, I believe, with spears. He's got some error boys, and he's got an orc, so he's got two level fours. He's got his orc shaman level four into the error boy squad, and he's got his goblin level four shaman here. He's got a giant. Um, towards the hill, you can see on his hill, he's got his uh, Doomdiver catapult. I've basically, on the center of my army, I've set up um, one of the, so I've got the two units of um, gun hand gunners, and then towards the other side, I've got, so here is one of the unit of Iron Drakes, and you can see right below them, you can't see it right at this angle, there's the other unit of Iron Drakes. 
right by them. So basically, I've got this center shooting lane, um, and he's got similar. He's got he's got his error boys right here, and his guys here with his goblin and his other end of black quirks. And he's got a leader uh, that's I, I forgot what he's armed specifically with, but just sort of a combat monster black quirks. He's running so he's got these two units of black quirks um, that are running extra hand weapons. Yeah, I've got my long beards right here. Uh, and then towards the far end, just to protect my flanks, I've got my Iron Breakers as well. So, yeah, you can kind of see here, I've got sort of, uh, all the units are basically doing is just to basically protect the center shooting line. Yeah, and for him, so yeah, and this is one of his Black Horks. He has a Black Hork hero in here. He then has a spider. Um, oh, the spider looks really nice. He's, he's in the process of painting it. Really great looking spider that he has his Goblin Mage on. Yeah, those are his just regular Orc Warriors. Um, and then he's got his error boys and then the metal piece that is his mage. Here's his giant. And then, yeah, he's got his doom diver catapult on the hill, his other unit of black orcs. And then he's got his, this is his general, um, uh, that is armed, sort of a combat monster general. I think he's got the ogre blade. I remember in this particular one. Yeah. That's just the setup of the two armies. Yep. Little and going good. All right. And that's just another setup and you can kind of see. Uh, I will be um, vanguarding up my gyrocopter as well. So yeah, that's just me vanguarding up the gyrocopter behind the, the trees. We're playing these trees is basically, um, you can't see unless you get on the other side. All right, top of turn one, the orcs and goblin tribes, they do get to go first on the top of turn one. So yeah, the first thing he does, he just moves up everything. He keeps his arrow boys back so they can shoot. And he's got his doom diver here. So he's just moving up. Um, all right here, he's also sending his leader. You don't see it on the back screen, but he's sending his leader into the forest here. Uh, and then he also moves up his spiders and his other black orcs. So he's just generally moving up. He does cast some spells. So he casts the foot of Gork right here, um, just to sort of um, block anything going on on the center. And then he puts, so this is the one that's, it's like, it's an elementalist spell for his, uh, for his goblin mage. And this is the one that's basically treated as blocking. So you can't shoot. He's trying to stop some of my shooting from happening here. Uh, of course, we know that both of those templates are going to move. So the bottom of turn one, uh, I get to go first. And the first thing, yeah, is that these, uh, so this big foot of Gork actually moves right in front of my hammers. He was, I think he was trying to get it to move in the center. But yeah, so he's blocking my hammers from moving. And then his also, his other elementalist template moves out of the way so he's i think he was hoping to try to get some blocking shooting but it just basically moves out of the way that's the thing with these vortexes you know they're just so random especially the foot of gork which has like i think it's like 2d6 movement so that's the first thing that happened here yeah so the first thing i would say is that i don't really my hammers really can't do much i think i actually end up just shifting over to the side with both the the warriors and the hammers because i just i don't want to get i don't want to get hit by this yeah, so that's just that one here. Um, so I do just go ahead and do my dive bomb across. So this is the gyrocopter. He marches and does his dive bomb. I think I kill about four or five. He does take a wound. When I do the dive bomb, one of these, I do roll a one. So I do take a wound of the gyrocopter and I do kill some of those guys. And then I also just move up my um, iron breakers and my long beards. You can see I, I'm pivoting slightly. And yeah, this is his leader that's come through the woods right here. So this is just me pivoting up. Uh, and yeah, this is just me sidestepping with my hammers and my warriors. They just sidestep through. And yeah, after that, I just, uh, I do move up the iron drakes a little bit. And both, basically both of the iron drake squads shoot their store hammers into the giant. I managed to do three wounds. So basically one of the troll hammer torpedoes hits and does three wounds to the giant. And then my, um, my marksmen actually shoot into... Um, the boys actually do enough damage to cause a panic check and uh, they break. So rule's kind of bad. I think he takes a few more wounds because he goes through with the gyrocopter. So yeah, um, those those boys just panic. And yeah, that's just sort of the end of, uh, of turn one. Pretty good in the sense that I did three wounds on the giant and I also did here. Uh, I think as well, um, he did, last turn he did shoot his Doom Diver. I think he missed, or I think he did some minor wounds. I don't. I think he, he killed. Um, I forget what he did. I don't know that he even did any wounds uh, for that turn. So uh, it's the top of turn two, and it goes back to the orcs and goblins. So the first thing that happens as well is this foot of Gork actually moves further to the left. 
So now it's it's actually blocking his spider from charging. And then this template also, it's almost like these templates are stuck to one another. So this foot of Gork, I think it's what it's called, is actually just getting in the way of this entire left side of the field doing any sort of charges. Cause like neither one of us want to charge each other. So sort of funny there. Yeah, that's just a picture where his spider and my iron, they just, I just can't, like neither one of us can move up or charge because we've got that thing just barreling down on us here. He does move up his giant um, and he moves up his um, black orcs. And then he also just comes and he gets into the flank of either my uh, long beards or my iron breaker. So that's just his leader getting the flank there. Um, he also turns around. So he does rally the orcs. His arrow boys do turn around and they shoot. He actually even tries to cast, uh, he casts Vindictive Glare on it to kill it. I do burn my Dispel, Ruin of Spellbreaking to stop that. I really want this thing to survive so I can swing around and then flame these guys. So he shoots it, but I do, so I do manage to stop his Vindictive Glare. And after everything, you're going to see he does just one wound. So this Gyrocopter just barely survives. Yeah, you can see he ends up just moving up closer but like I said, there's sort of a standoff here because we got this template here that's sort of stopping anyone from moving up. Um, yeah, that's just a picture there as well. And uh, yeah, you're going to sort of see. So he does, uh, sh I know he ended up doing a wound on this gyrocopter, but that barely survives. And that's just sort of an up close picture. He shoots his doom diver into the long beards and I think he kills like two of them. So he's whittling down the long beards as well. And uh, yeah, so there's the other wound he did to the air boys into the gyrocopter. All right. So the bottom of turn two, it is the dwarven holds that get to go here. So um, I think, so this is just where we're kind of starting here. I think this thing, I think it just moves a little bit and it just continues just to stay between the both of us. So basically my hammers, I've actually been wanting to move up these hammers, but I just can't, like I can't, I'd be taking like two or three hits on this foot of Gork. I just don't want to. Do so this foot of Gork is sort of like, it's really sort of stalling this side of the field. Um, but yeah, anyway, I so I actually roll really good on my charges. I think I needed a seven on both of them and I got both of them. So I get a combo. This was a really good roll on my part to get both of my units of dwarves into these black orcs. That's really good. Um, the other thing is that, so the, the elemental spell, so I'm oh, sorry, so this is the movement in which the foot of Gork stays right here. The elemental spell actually perfectly moves right in front of my marksman. I wanted my marksman to actually shoot into these arrow boys, and I wanted my gyrocopter on the far end here to flame and maybe break these arrow boys. But this elemental spell moves right in front of both of my marksmen so that I can't shoot. Luckily though, I do manage to uh, shoot between the iron drakes just standing still they do shoot and they actually with two troll hammers do take out the giant. So the giant's dead through both of the iron drakes. So what I actually end up doing is since I couldn't shoot the arrow boys with my marksman, my marksman actually, I think I get a few of them in range to shoot the spider. I roll pretty good and actually I do two wounds on the spider. So yeah, the shooting is going pretty good managing in two turns, I took out the giant and then uh, also I managed to, to do some wounds on the spider as well. So, uh, yeah, that's just showing. I, I, and I rolled pretty good. I think I just had a few of them who were in range to shoot, and I managed to put two wounds on the spider here. Yeah, and so, I, I man, I actually flamed these arrow boys, and I got a ton of them, but I did not roll a single wound. I think I got like 12 or 13 hits or something like that, but I did not get a single wound on them. So, yeah, I will. And yeah, that, I need, I'll need. i move over his two wounds after that. So this uh, gyrocopter sort of flubbed his two wound roll. But I did not flub my wound roll with these guys. They basic, basically, both of these units attacked these black orcs. They, they basically won combat. And then I more than doubled him, right? Because I had both of these squads in range. And I, I won combat. And not only did I win combat, I chased him down with boxcars. So these iron breakers, I think, rolled double sixes chased down and killed these black orcs. So really great rolls here. I think the uh, long beards also just move forward, trying to get in range of that doom diver. Just some really great rolls here just to roll box cars on the, on, because remember minus one for the dwarves uh, whenever they um, they charge and whenever they, they do it. So really big roll here. 
And yeah, great turn for me. It is the top of turn one, uh, turn three, uh, with the goblin, uh, orcs and goblin tribes here. So he finally just chooses to just heal. So he dispels his own foot of Gork. By the way, I spent two turns trying to dispel that spell myself, and I never could. Like, I just have a level two with my Rune Lord right here, and I spent two turns trying to dispel that thing. I never could dispel it. So he just goes ahead and just dispels it himself so he can actually just get some charges off. So um, actually, we're going to have some action on this side of the board as well. He, uh, yeah, this is just his other picture as well. He's going to, he does rally his boys, and then he's going to turn his arrow boys to shoot. So he goes ahead and make charges. He charges his spider into my, um, basically my, uh, you know, really nasty unit and sends his black orcs into my warriors. Um, he actually sends his boss into the flank of my longbeards. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, he turns his arrow boys with his mage around to face my gyrocopter. He moves up his boys. Yeah, yeah, I think he manages to just shoot down that gyrocopter. So the gyrocopter's dead. Um, he actually casts the Plague of Rust onto these guys, which I didn't think was that big of a deal. I mean, honestly, he's he's pretty much at AP minus two on everything, and these guys only have five up armor. So I actually had my invulnerable save anyway, so I was okay with that. Um, his Doom Diver actually misfires. So another bit of bad luck on his end. He has a misfiring Doom Diver. Yeah, I mean, this is a really nasty squad here. I just end up murdering that spider. Just I just murder it. I mean, you know, it's he did he did he was able to strike first. He killed some guys, but just I had a five up and vulnerable, and then just I mean, this is a nasty squad that just outright murdered that spider. Um, he does roll a lot better. He, he, he kills like seven or eight of these uh, dwarves, so they fail and they actually fall back in good order because he doesn't, he doesn't uh, double, uh, he doesn't uh, outnumber me by two. So I fall back in good order and he just follows up. Uh, I actually do a challenge with my uh, Longbeard leader, and so he fights. He does kill him, but actually I win combat through combat res. So, uh, and actually this Longbeard doing pretty good. I think he has this Ogre Blade, but I actually do get um, uh, enough saves that, yeah, I managed to do okay. And, yeah, I just turn around and just uh, face his orc leader. And, yeah, that's just the picture of the end of his turn. Uh, you can see here uh, he's actually marking that Doom Diver as uh, not being able to shoot next turn. And that's just the picture on that end. And, yeah, it is the bottom of three. The Dwarven Holds get to go next. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, first thing is I just march up, um, I get within range of charging this Doom Diver next turn. He also can't shoot me, and these guys just stay fighting the leader. Um, yeah, I thought you, it's not shown here, you'll see it later, but I do turn my hammers to face the Black Orcs in the, the left. You'll see that later on. So I do actually do a lot of shooting. I shoot basically everything into this Orc Squad. I kill a fair number of them, down to five, but he does pass his morale. But still, these orcs have really been whittled down. So, really just whittling down here. Yeah, he does uh, basically kill the warriors down to three, and they break. So they run, and he he holds, he, he passes his hold check, and he's going to turn and uh, face my hammers. Yeah, he manages to kill, I think he kills like one more, one or two more, but I basically still win through combat res, but he sticks. So this is sort of sort of a stalled combat for now. And yeah, the top of turn four, it is the orcs and goblins who go, and yeah, he goes ahead and just charges his black orcs into my hammers. Um, uh, he then turns, so it's not shown here, he didn't feel like moving individual models, but he does turn his error boys to face, um, to face, basically face the shooting squad. Uh, and then he also, um, he does shoot at my, I think he casts a spell, he managed to kill one of these iron drakes as well. He tries to shoot his error boys into these iron drakes, but he doesn't do any wounds. Um, yeah. So I think somehow, I think it was a spell or something, he does kill one of these Iron Drakes. And he casts his Vortex again right in front of these guys. So this is his Foot of Gork coming from his Orc guy. And uh, actually, more bad rolls for him. He manages, I, yeah, he manages, doesn't roll great for him. And he actually manages to 
fail, and then he runs um, because he basically loses combat. He rolls terrible for his. Um, I think this guy's like leadership nine. He fail. He I think he rolls like a ten or eleven or something. So his leader loses combat, fails, and runs. I I don't catch him though. But yeah, his leader runs as well. Really bad rolls for him to be honest, especially some of the leadership checks. So that's just showing the end of a turn uh, where um, I've managed to check off stuff as leader. Yeah, I mean, my, my hammers, um, he does get a little bit, uh, he does manage to, so I basically kill the entire front rank. He does have a hero in here that manages to kill three of these guys. But yeah, I just, the hammers and all three of the leaders, they just murder. I mean, this is like a, this is just a nasty squad that I managed to just murder. Yeah, what is that? Like 11 guys or something like that. So yeah, I just murder all these black orcs um, and he runs. I think it's just... Way the combat res is so stacked against him, I outnumber him. So I break him, and then uh, he runs. He just runs off the board. So, yeah. Um, bottom of turn four. This is my go. But um, this is... So this is just showing the state of the board. He pretty much concedes right here. He just sort of looks at the state of the board and says, Okay, well, you know, so this is just um, me just picking up some of my units after the fact. Um, you can see these guys. I'm just sort of picking up now. I just wanted to show you a last picture here of just, yeah, I mean, him just, we just called it here. So, end of the game. The Dwarven Holds do win. It is a turn four concession on my turn by the Orc and Goblin tribes. You know, I would say this hatred against, me having hatred against this entire army is really rough. I also had some good rolls too, especially that charge roll I made into those Black Orcs. And he had some... He had some pretty bad rolls, especially in leadership checks. So some learning points. You know, I really like these iron drakes. I know that I've seen some dwarves. I don't. I don't like cannons. I don't like. Um, I don't like a lot. I like iron drakes, and I think those iron drakes with those troll hammers are great. So yeah, I think I think they did me very well. The hammers just with the banners. I remember I'm running the banner of confusion, and then I have the. I've got the leader with the Pathfinder, I mean, the, the, the uh, champion with the Pathfinder, and then I've got the the uh, the Fire of Invulnerable. Just, this hammer squad is just really nasty. Um, and the gyrocopters are another really great. One thing I'll probably do is I'll probably start, um, should have, I'm probably just going to go five wide with the hammers, and then I'm probably just going, just to save some space, then I'm just going to move up, and then... It, Basically, after I move up, I'm then just going to reform into 10 because I don't see a reason to just keep them at 10 from the beginning. So, but yeah, uh, really had a good time. Um, really enjoying the old world here. So definitely would be interested in feedback. Like, subscribe, and comment. And hey, send me your Dwarven Holds army lists. I'd love to see how my fellow Dwarven uh, uh, are doing. Thank you guys so much.